Hey, how's it going, everybody? What an exciting day for me uh, to come home and find an Outback Skybox in my driveway. Uh, I was looking forward to doing an unboxing video, but unfortunately, FedEx unboxed it for me. Uh, it was a little stressful. Uh, I had to go track them down, uh, but in all in all, in the end, it, it was fine. There wasn't any real damage. Uh, it just uh, The guy didn't take very good care of it. We rectified it, and uh, here it is. So, I have been waiting for this inverter for at least two years. Uh, I think that's roughly how long we've been. It's been in the buzz. Uh, I know we had some other stuff that had to be taken care of with Rule 21, and that kind of superseded everything else. But uh, this is exciting because I kind of feel this is the answer to the power wall. Um, you know, the benefits that we have coming up with this is this is this is made by a company that's already off grid experienced. Um, they, you know, they're taking their off grid experience and their grid tie that they already have with the Radian. Um, and their independent charge controllers and the batteries and all the stuff that they've already, you know, sold and that we know is a good product. And they've kind of merged a lot of this in one. This unit has a 600 volt dual string MPPT charge controller, um, or I guess inverter, I guess at that point in time. Um, but it has the ability to sell to the grid or charge the batteries. So it's really kind of a, this is a very multifunction unit. Um, it also, we no longer have to deal with the mate. We now have a more intuitive display, which is touchscreen, which has a ton of data. I got to play with this when I was at Outback a few weeks ago, or I'm sorry, a few months, and uh, it has a ton of data. It's way easier to parallel these. We also don't have to use the hub anymore. Um, the system is completely connected by Cat5 connectors now, um, so it's going to be a lot speedier to hook everything up. One of the other things they did, too, is they just gave us a lot more room in the, com the combiner. Um, you know, inherently with the GSLC, a lot of people weren't fans of it because it's a very tight enclosure. There's a lot going on in there. Um, this is just a simpler enclosure to work with. It's got everything all in there. And they've also taken and made everything have quick connects so that if you do have a problem with your inverter, uh, I think the, the primary beginning plan is going to be to ship the unit back or have an exchange uh, program set up. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to give you guys just a quick overview on this. Um, I also do need to read the manual, and as I put this up in the power room, I'll give you guys a little more information about what it really can do. All right, let me show you inside the combiner now. All right, so you can see they got everything in here, and with plenty of room also. We don't have a bunch of uh, combiner bars in here like we used to have. Everything is direct feed breakers. Um, so starting from the right to left, we have the 600-volt uh, DC disconnect with the dual-string MPPT inputs. Uh, we have the critical load output, the generator input, the grid input, and then your battery 175 amp breaker. It does come with all the jumpers to connect all the battery portion of it. And basically you just feed your inputs into the system and you're good to go. I'm going to say this is going to be a much speedier install than even the pre-wired GSLC with the way that they have it. Uh, I think you can also see um, right across the top here, you can see all the quick connects. So basically, once you mount the uh, the breaker box, you basically set the inverter on top of it, stab it in uh, the connectors, and you're good to go. So I think this is going to greatly improve the speed of what it takes to put in a battery backup system. All right, so one of the reasons I've been waiting on putting my, my custom IBR3 with the Simplify batteries is spatially, I was trying to really balance everything out. I didn't really know where I was going to put the skybox, if I wanted it on the the far wall over here if I wanted to kind of keep everything on here. But now that I got it and I kind of fit it all in there, uh, I kind of came up with how I want my power flow to be. Um, I really incorporate a lot of Flexware 1000s uh, with the VFX series. This is really one of the original enclosures that we had to work with. I really like the space and the safety factor that comes with them. So a lot of times what I'll have is I'll have a Flexware 1000 just for my inverters, a Flexware 1000 for all my renewable energy combining, um, I'm going to have the IBR3 set up right here with its own mate and its own flex net. Whoop, it's a temp. <laughs> so it's going to also be set up here so that I can feed all of the data from the independent flex net up to Optics RE. And I'm going to be able to aggregate the two in the cloud. So that's going to give me six channels of flex net monitoring, um, three for the three strings of batteries, one for the inverters, and then all the PV. And I'll have a spare channel for a wind turbine or hydro turbine later. So there's a lot of benefits to kind of setting up this, you know, dual mate system so uh, once I get the IBR3 mounted then it'll give me a space over here to mount the skybox and then I'll kind of build off of that um, I'm really going to have uh, kind of about four systems running uh, at any given time on my off-grid house I got my VFX's that are my primary power 
I just picked up a Radian system that's going to give me a little extra boost in the wintertime when I need charging or a backup for my VFXs. I'm going to have the Skybox, which is kind of in the beta state right now. They are going to be released uh, quarter four, I guess, right before SPI. So I buy everything from Wholesale Solar, so it'll be available for you guys there also. Um, so there's a lot happening, and uh, it's pretty exciting to show you what we got coming up next. Let me go show you the IBR3 real quick. Okay, this is the, um, the, the Outback IBR3. Um, this is really made for like their 200 amp hour series of front terminal mounted batteries, the AGMs. And uh, I got this from a project where a uh, guy wanted to do some trading, so I traded him this and a Radian. Uh, I pulled the batteries out uh, when I got the Simplifies, and I thought, well, I've wall mounted the last couple systems with them, and I wanted to try to condense them more. And I started looking at this IVR3, and I thought, how perfect was this? Because one of the things that I think that really need to be done with these types of batteries is um, while they do have a breaker on the battery, I think that they should be breakered at the point of connection, um, mainly because with these, uh, especially the Simplifies, um, not knowing what the battery is doing and want to do any type of testing, if you um, run all these back and parallel them, there's no way to test those batteries without shutting the system down. So by utilizing the IBR3, I kind of got a couple of really good benefits. I'm able to retain the 175 amp breakers, which is perfect for two batteries and a string. Um, I'll have three parallel connections uh, doing it this way. And then I also took and installed um, three shunts and another flex net. And what this is gonna allow me to do is feed more data into my Optics RE account. And I'm gonna be able to actually aggregate the data from both mate controllers, one from the primary system and one from the battery based portion. And I'll be able to actually monitor all three strings to see that the current flow is actually going in and out proportionately of how it's supposed to with these simplifies so that I can get some data other than just a, a mean average of what the amp hour flow is going in and out of the batteries. I'll be able to see each channel A, B, and C that to make sure that each one is flowing in evenly. So, you know, um, one of the fun things is I get, I'm getting a lot of manufacturer support right now um, to do a lot of testing and kind of play on my system. And it's amazing how much knowledge that's given me. That's fun to be able to kind of share of, of what I'm seeing out there. So next up, we got, uh, we got three of the Discover 6.6 coming. And uh, those guys saw the video that I did of the LED lights on this. And they were super psyched because they say that they got away using Arduino that we're going to be able to show state of charge with the LED lights um, and kind of reference uh, how full they are by the color. So I think everybody's going to like that. So hope you guys like seeing the skybox and what I got going on next. I'm sure we're going to have some fun stuff along the way. Have a good day.